everyone and welcome to this week's video. Firstly, let me just slightly apologise if you do hear some noise in the background of this video. We're currently having building works done on our block of flats and there has not been a quiet time for me to do voiceover properly. So if you do hear some background noise, I do apologise. But I digress. This week, I'm going to show you a technique that I learned from TikTok wow, TikTok is teaching me so much these days on how to digitally colour your traditional sketches. I have always wondered how people have done this technique where they have their sketchbook, you see the picture, they've got their sketchbook laid out um, and it's all beautifully framed and they have digitally coloured that sketch so that their original sketch is still intact but then they have a finalised product and I've always wondered how to do that because sometimes I'll have a sketch that I really like but I don't like the finalised product so this is a happy medium to be able to do that. All you're going to need for this uh, to be able to do that is you are going to need your sketchbook, uh, decent lighting and something to take a picture of said product and of course your digital program. This technique can be used on any digital program that allows you to multiply on the layer which I'll go through and explain as we get to that portion. So as you can see here I am just uh, doing my quick sketch. Um, I uh, didn't really think about much. I really wanted to do an elven princess and with uh, lots of like folds in a skirt and I've been really inspired actually um, by uh, by quite a few cosplayers at the moment who are doing these beautiful elaborate like princess designs and I think that's just rubbed off and something that I'm very very inspired by at the moment. Regency costumes just make me very happy. Uh, so this is sort of Regency inspired but it's not Regency because the cut of uh, the dress doesn't make sense for Regency but I digress. Um, so here I am just using standard pencils. I do not have anything special here. Um, another way that you could do this technique is you could apply watercolour on top of the graphite. You just have to make sure that the graphite is water soluble and you can get some graphite that will react with water um, and this can create like a really beautiful faded effect on top of your illustration um, but your sketch will always remain a sketch. I actually really like the look of sketches. I love how messy they are. I love the um all the lines the looseness and that to me is extremely appealing i really love that i just think it's so much fun to do and um it's a technique that you don't often see in my work because i love really clean line work for when i'm doing a finalized product but this is a really good way to like sort of like breathe life into a sketch so now you can see here i've got my finished sketch um i've purposely chosen not to do like loads of lines around it so that we could be a little loosey-goosey with the paints and i am just framing the sort of like how i want the picture to be taken so i'm just standing a few objects around adding pencils um just to sort of like frame the product itself um it's not the best for the photo shoot idea ideally i would have had like flowers around as well but i don't actually have my paper flowers accessible so i do have all these like little tiny stars that i cut out from scrap pieces of uh like pieces of paper so instead of throwing them away and what i'm doing is i'm just adjusting my lighting so i actually have two daylight bulbs which really help balance the lighting um for when i'm doing videos and such so that it doesn't end up too harsh uh, i have two daylight bulbs they i've got craft lamp stands at the bottom so they purposely have like storage area in it and that allows me to be able to take a decent picture um when you're taking a picture things that you need to think about is lighting. Lighting is so important but now that we've done this and we've taken our picture we're going to take this into Procreate. Now I've sent my picture to Procreate, I've sent it by an email but that's not important and you can see here I'm just resizing it onto the canvas and after I've resized it I am going to use the levels tool to adjust the uh, brightness and contrast up on the photo. This is just so that the paper isn't too yellowed and you're able to uh, play around a little bit with the colours. This 
takes a bit of practice. I'm really used to adjusting now uh, photos for printing, so this doesn't take too long for me. So I'm just looking at this objectively. Now, I don't think the editing tool for photos is the best on Procreate. I actually prefer it on Photoshop, um, but we're using my iPad at the moment uh, to be able to sort of do this. Uh, for those wondering, this is the Apple iPad first generation, uh, first generation Apple iPad Pro 9.7 inch with the Apple uh, Pen first generation. Um, it's a tool I've had for quite a while. It's something I've used to be able to do digital sketching um, and I've been trying to get familiar with it. So after I've adjusted my photo, you can see here I'm double checking the areas, dragging um, on so I can make that paper a little bit whiter. But you can see here, it just looks like a normal photo. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to a, go to a blank layer. You're going to go up and you're going to click multiply. What this is gonna allow you to do, this is gonna allow you to color on top of that while it's still keeping the integrity of your lines. It is magic. When I first learned this, my mind was absolutely blown. Bear in mind, I'm nearly a 30 year old lady and digital art is still something to me that is new, it's fresh, it's something I'm still learning. I've only got a few years, I say a few years, I only started learning digital art when I was at university and I've sort of like dabbled back and forth since because um, it's not really something that I gelled with 100%. I used to only do digital art for the longest time and I found that it was not as organic as I wanted to so I switched back to traditional art for when I started this YouTube channel and since then have dabbled here and there in digital art so I don't lose those skills. Um, it's really fascinating to me now and this is, for me I think now the fact that we have art so much more accessible at our fingertips absolutely blows my mind. There's still stuff that I'm learning every single day, techniques that I'm learning every single day that I sit there and go this is so simple how did I not know about that and this is one of the most amazing things about having all this information now readily available and accessible to us. Like, I always feel like I'm constantly improving and constantly learning because there is everything out there. You're never too young or too old to learn a new skill. So this is it. All you need to do, so just let's go through those steps again. If you want to uh, transform your traditional sketches and color them digitally, you, uh, you put your, uh, you take a picture of your product, you put the picture of that product on one layer, edit it so that you're happy with the contrast and the way that the colors look on the actual photo itself. Go to a new blank layer and when it goes to layer properties, you want to select multiply. This will allow you to color on top of that layer uh, without having to destroy the line work underneath. If you wish to actually color on top of the lines to make some lines a little bit bolder, you can either go to your original sketch layer and work on there or you can do what I'm doing here where you can select a new layer and have it just as a normal layer and this will allow you to color on top of the sketch. Mind was blown when I learned this. I, when I, I was talking to my other friends who mainly do digital art and they were like, how did you not already know about that? And I was like, I don't think you understand how little of my basis of knowing digital art was. I, um, whenever I use Photoshop for coloring, I, I know how to color on Photoshop. I know how to do X, Y, and Z but it's such a massive program and there is so much to learn. You can animate on that program, you can do 3D art on that. And it's the same with like, I, I don't know how to use Coral Painter, but I don't know how to use Paint Tool Sai. And this is just because I'm not a big digital artist, so I don't massively invest in those programs. At the moment, I mainly use Procreate 
and I use Photoshop. Um, Procreate, I paid for when I first got my iPad and it honestly has been a fantastic drawing tool for me. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I can go in depth in a video if people do want me to talk about like why I think the iPad is a good drawing tool. Um, I can talk about that in the future. Um, if you want to hear a little bit more about that and my experience with that, uh, let me know in the comments section down below. It's not a replacement for a computer. I will will say that it does have its restrictions um, but overall I've really enjoyed using an iPad and using Procreate. Uh, Photoshop is a tool that I've used since I was at uni and it's a program that I understand how to use. Um, I have very minimal understanding of Illustrator and a very minimal understanding of other drawing programs too. I've dabbled in coral paint and I've dabbled in paint tools. I, I do not like pen stabilization. I understand that a lot of people live by it. I don't like pen st stabilization. I find it, um, it's for me, personally, for me, I just don't like it and that's why I don't really gel with paint tool sigh. I know you can turn it off, but for me, I, I, I can't get my head around it. And this is why I say it's always important to try new things and try and learn. Like, this has just taught me that there is another layer to digital colouring that I've never even thought about before. So, how could we recreate this traditionally it gets a little bit more difficult because once you've put your sketch down and it's already in graphite it does make it a little bit more difficult for you to be able to recreate this um i would say the easiest way easiest way the way that i could think to replicate this traditionally um would be using colored pencils and watercolors you could be able to you could put your graphite down and um, wash it down with watercolors and then build up textures with your pencil crayons or with your colored pencils um but you're not going to get the same smooth effect this uh, smooth effect really reminds me of gouache um but I'm not massively experienced with gouache, so I can't really say that that's the finalised technique. The looseness of the lines reminds me of when I play around with coloured pencils and we're able to get all those textured lines. Um, it's an interesting technique for sure, but it's a really good technique to be able to transform your traditional sketches into digital. And maybe this is a way for those who are um, stepping their foot feet into digital art and they're not entirely sure maybe this is a way that you can marry the two together this is certainly a thing that i i'm now looking at where i can go i can now do so much more than what i realized i can have a sketch and if i'm happy with it in my sketchbook but want to plan how it would look color wise this will make my life so much easier this may not be a new technique for many people, but um, or it may not be a technique that is new to others or they already know about it. Um, but if you're like me and you've never seen this technique before or always wondered how it worked, here you are. This is for people who are like me who have gone, huh, I wonder how someone's done that. <laughs> So here is a few pictures of the finalised product. I'm really, really happy with it. I use a lot of textured brushes to try and recreate sort of like traditional colouring. Um, so I'm really happy with how the final product turned out. If there's a few things that I could change. I think I've made a neck far too long. She looks kind of like a giraffe. Um, but if I was to fix that, I would definitely shorten her neck and bring her shoulders up a little bit more. Her hair hides quite a big portion of those shoulders so it makes her look like she's got very long neck and very like her proportions are a bit off but I digress I really enjoyed this technique and I hope you learned something too I hope you can join me next week for next week's video but I hope you all have a wonderful day keep drawing and stay creative